Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Ocean County School Counselors Association Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. My name is Julian, and I'm going to be your facilitator throughout this session. We have six awesome institutions ready and willing to answer any questions and share some awesome information with you. So if you have any questions, please use the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen and make sure that you address the institution that you want to answer your questions. So that way we get those done in a timely manner. And then also just remembering that your camera and microphone are off. So just all, all you really have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the information. And if you want to uh, sign up for more sessions in the future, you can do so by going to strivescan.com. And you will also be able to find the recording of this session available there within about a week at strivescan.com backslash OCSCA. We are going to get started with our first university of the evening, the University of Rhode Island. We're going to let them get their screen share going. And remember, just uh, to ask any questions you have throughout any time this evening. You're, you're actually on mute there, Brad. Sorry about that. All right, so welcome. I'm Brad Cocking. I'm the regional admission advisor for the Mid-Atlantic area. I'm based in New Jersey, so I am your admission counselor. If you ever have any questions after tonight, feel free to contact me. My email is on our admission website. So if you haven't been to campus, this is a picture of our quad area right in the middle of campus. We are located in Southern Rhode Island, about 10 to 15 minutes away from the beach area. Uh, we're about 35 minutes south of Providence, so it's the closest city, about 20 minutes from Newport, hour and a half from Boston, two and a half from New York City. We are a medium-sized university with just under 15,000 undergrad, so campus itself is all walking distance, so you're not taking shuttles to classes or anything like that. We're also a diverse campus. We have about 48% of our students are from out of state and international. The entire student body is represented by 48 states, 68 nations. We also have an excellent faculty on campus, student to faculty ratio, 16 to one, 86% have doctoral or terminal degrees. And we like to keep your class sizes smaller. So about 76% have less than 30 students. You will have some bigger lecture halls your first year or two. That's mostly in your general education classes. Once you get into your major courses, they're typically smaller. As far as housing, you're not required to live on campus, but 94% of our freshmen live on campus. One of our 24 residence halls, most freshmen will live in one of our living and learning communities where you can choose to live with uh, other students within your major, within your academic college. For example, the College of Engineering has one where all the freshman engineering students are in one area. So you have similar classes together. They have study groups. It's very helpful freshman year. Then after your first year, you have different on-campus options. You see at the bottom there, we have full suites, semi-suites, and a few different apartment complexes on campus as well. Um, so I don't have time to tell you about specific majors, but you can choose from over 90 majors, 80 plus minors across our eight degree granting colleges here. You can also apply as undeclared. You really have two years to declare a major with the exception of nursing, engineering, and our six year doctor of pharmacy program. Those are our most competitive majors that have different requirements. So you want to apply right away, um, you want to apply to those majors right away as a freshman. Besides the majors, URI is lots of opportunities outside of the classroom. We have plenty of internship programs all over the country, all over the world. Uh, study abroad is very popular here. We have over 700 programs in more than 75 countries. Every major, every student can study abroad if they want to. Uh, we have full semester programs, full year, and even shorter programs in our winter term. Uh, we're very much a research institution. You'll have plenty of research opportunities on and off campus. You can work side by side with faculty mentors in the field. We do have an honors program. The Common App will ask you if you're interested in our honors program. So you just check yes or no. Um, and if you want to find more details about the honors program, the minimum criteria to be eligible, they do have a great website. And then the stat at the bottom, 90% of our graduates are employed or enrolled in grad school within six months of graduation. So of course that's important and we are proud of that stat. Um, there are always a lot of events happening on campus every year. We have 18 division one sports teams. Basketball is our most popular sport. Uh, this picture here is the Ryan Center where the team plays. So you can see it's a great atmosphere for home games. There's also a lot of other big events here at the Ryan Center, huge concerts, big comedians come up. Um, and then other events on campus like alumni and family weekend. 
um, plenty of other events you can view on the website. Uh, besides the events, we have over 300 student clubs and organizations. So we have something for everybody. Most of our students are involved in at least one club or organization, whether that's athletics, Greek life, academic clubs, fun outdoor clubs, one of our centers and programs there at the bottom. So like I said, many of our students like to get involved in the community in some capacity. This is our application process. Uh, we are on the Common App, $65 app fee. The essay is on the Common App. So you wanna submit your Common App first. Uh, that opens up in August. Then we'll need your official high school transcript. Your counselor will send that. At least one letter of recommendation. Most students send between one and three to us, and that's fine. Definitely send a counselor letter, maybe a counselor and a teacher, a counselor and a coach. It's really up to you. The big difference is the big difference this year and next year, we are test optional for all majors. So totally up to you if you want to send your SAT or ACT score. Um, we do super score both. So if you wanna, if you choose to take one or both tests, I recommend taking it multiple times uh, to get your highest score. And then you see at the bottom there, our middle 50% profile. This is half of our admitted students are in those GPA and test score ranges, and that's the average ACT. This is half, so people at higher GPAs, test scores, lower GPAs and test scores that were admitted. This just gives you a general idea. And that's for every major except nursing, engineering, and the doctor of pharmacy program. And then deadlines at the right. Um, our early action deadline is December 1st, which is later than most colleges. I always recommend everybody apply early action, especially those competitive majors. Um, there's no negative to applying early. You get your decision sooner. You also get priority consideration for scholarships applying early action. And then the other deadline is February 1st. Once you complete your application, you're automatically considered for merit scholarships. Uh, we do have a wide range up to full ride. Uh, your eligibility is based on academic performance. Of course, we'll look at your GPA and your transcript closely. We like to see a challenging course selection. Also, letters of recommendation, any activities, and involvement, and leadership in your school and community. That's all considered in the review process. So if you are interested, I recommend taking advantage of our virtual options for now. That website at the bottom that has all of our virtual events. We have virtual tours, one-on-one -on -one counselor meetings. Uh, we can connect you with current students in your major. Um, there's a recorded info session on there, just like you would get in an in-person tour. Academic webinars for every academic college and some specific majors. Then there's more events and we're adding more as we go. So I'm out of time, but thank you. And uh, please message me if you have any questions. All right, thank you so much, University of Rhode Island. We're gonna start getting ready to move over to University of Tennessee. We'll allow them to get their screen share going. I uh, just wanna to continue to encourage you to pop in those questions throughout the evening and make sure that you address the institution that you would like to answer it. University of Tennessee, you have the floor. All right, thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Cheryl Tingling. I am gonna be your admissions counselor for the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And I also reside in New York City. And so um, I'll be your point of contact throughout your enrollment process. So just going over Knoxville or UT in general, um, we have the perfect mixture of both nature and city life. We are located right into downtown Knoxville. And so we have malls, great eateries and great things for you to get into on the weekends that are in walking distance. But then we also have a, a national park that's right in our backyard, which is the Great Smoky Mountains. And I know when I was down there, um, I never thought as a city girl, I would want to get involved in whitewater rafting or paddle boarding. But um, since it's so close, I was definitely something I was able to engage in and actually fall in love with. And getting down there is super easy. So um, you can obviously drive, it's about a 10 hour uh, drive, but you can also fly down. And I recommend using Allegiant Air out of Newark, New Jersey. A little bit about our campus community. Uh, we are a large campus. We have about 23,000 undergraduate students on campus, but our class sizes remain very, fairly small. So as you can see here, 17 to one is our student to faculty ratio. We also offer about 89% of our students financial aid and scholarships, which I'll get into in a little bit. And 84% of graduates have reported that they are in a, uh, a job or they are in a grad school within six months of graduating. So you're gonna get a really great return on investment here at UT. And lastly, we have over 360 majors for you to choose from. And I'll go a little bit into our academic colleges next. 
So here's our list of academic colleges. When you're applying for admission, I initially get your application to determine if you're gonna be a good fit into the university. And then based on your intended major, I'll send it off to one of these academic colleges. Um, and as you can see here, I also listed two of our graduate colleges, which is the College of Law and College of Veterinary Medicine. Here's a list of our competitive programs that require additional materials for admission, like the College of Architecture, Nursing, Engineering, Pre-Pharmacy, and our School of Music. And just highlighting some things about our student experience, I mentioned return on investment. So we do have a career center um, aimed at helping you get internships and co-ops and getting jobs after you've graduated. Living on campus is a huge aspect of your student experience. We do have 14 residence halls and 14 living and learning communities or LLCs. And of course, like I said, our campus is big. So you wanna make sure that you're able to make it a little bit small. And I definitely suggest getting involved. So we have over 600 clubs and organizations, intramurals and Greek life. And lastly, studying abroad. Uh, once the world opens back up, you have over 50 countries for you to choose from and you can choose your duration while you're abroad. So let's get into the application process. You can apply using our application or through or apply through the Common App. Here's your list of required items. So you do need to complete the self-reported academic record or the SAR. We do have an application fee, a required essay, and if your test optional, we do require an additional essay as well. I also have a list of, of optional items that I'm gonna say you should um, add to your application in order to make sure it's its strongest um, application. And so letters of recommendation, supporting statements, and resumes are all highly um, wanted from you. And then also we recalculate your GPA. So we will use these subjects and th this amount of units in order to recalculate your GPA and then add weight if you've taken any high rigor courses. And this is gonna come up when I talk about scholarships. And so let's get into important dates. Of course, October 1st is when FAFSA opens up. Uh, November 2nd is our early action deadline. And again, it's non-binding. Um, and early action just means you're applying early and you're applying in order to be eligible for competitive scholarships and honors programs with us. We also have a regular decision deadline, which is December 15th, the last day for you to apply to get a merit-based scholarship from us. So I was mentioning scholarships. Uh, this is our first merit-based scholarship with Tennessee Explore. Here you can see, so it's up with a minimum 3.6 core weighted GPA, and you can see the test score ranges and its corresponding annual amount. The next merit-based scholarship is a volunteer. It's a 3.8 weighted core GPA, and again, you can see the test score ranges and its corresponding amount, which is between 10 and 18,000. And lastly, we do have a test optional scholarship as well. To be considered, you need to have a 3.8 weighted core GPA, and then a scholarship community will determine if you're going to be awarded that scholarship. For out-of-state students, it's between 4,000 and 18,000 annually. Lastly, we have a bunch of ways for you to engage with us. We are open for on-campus tours. We're actually gonna be fully operational for in-person learning this fall, which is really exciting. But if you're not able to visit, we have a bunch of virtual options for you. And you can also chat with a current student in your intended major or from uh, a student who's a first gen or whatever you'd like to filter out as well. And lastly, if you want all of this information in black and white, you can easily scan this QR code using your phone's camera and you'll have our out of state brochure right on your phone. And so I'm running out of time. So I'll just give you my contact information, Cheryl at utk.edu. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. And next is gonna be University of Vermont. We're gonna let them get their screen share going. Uh, but definitely, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in that Q&A chat box. And University of Vermont, you are uh, on the floor now. Awesome. Thanks so much, Julian. Hi, guys. My name is Candace Duckworth. I am the Regional Associate Director of Admissions for the University of Vermont. Like the previous schools before me, I also am from New Jersey. I don't actually live in Burlington. Uh, so I'm here to be your resource throughout your entire college search process. We'll get started today with just some quick facts about the university. You can see here both our size and also the breadth of the programs that we offer. 
You might notice that the ratio of our in-state to out-of-state students is a little unusual for a state public university. Um, that's because Vermont is a small state, so our students come from all parts of the United States as well as abroad. And that's just really one distinguishing feature of UVM. Uh, for academics, we offer more than 100 different majors and we're off, um, organized into seven different schools and colleges that you can see listed there. Our College of Arts and Sciences is our largest. And then um, if you're not sure what you want to do and you're, you're really undecided, you want to figure it out, you can apply as undecided to each of the schools and colleges with the exception of the College of Nursing or the School of Business. So we offer you a lot of flexibility to figure out what it is you want to do. Some of UVM's distinctive qualities on the surface can appear uh, pretty contradictory. We are old. We were founded in 1791. We're actually the fifth oldest college in New England. Uh, but we're constantly renewing our programs as well as our facilities to keep up with the ever-changing world around us. And our size being right around 10,000 students is also unique. It's big compared to many liberal arts colleges, but it's much smaller than other national research universities. So you get that small school feel within the large school um, framework of opportunities and resources. It's also true that our location in Burlington, Vermont is both urban and open. Uh, our campus is right in Burlington, which is a small city, but it is the largest city in Vermont. Uh, it's known for great food, music, and other arts, as well as business and technology. Lake Champlain and the Green and Adirondack Mountains are kind of all around us as well, so you've got a lot of great opportunities to get out and explore. Putting knowledge to work and learning by doing is definitely another hallmark of a UVM education. 92% of students participate in experiential learning opportunities, including but definitely not limited to internships, research, service learning, and study abroad. So some of our specialized facilities we have include a new STEM complex featuring a state-of-the-art teaching and research labs. We also have the University of Vermont Medical Center, which is a level one trauma center in our backyard, which is such a tremendous resource for students in the health sciences. We also have research farms and facilities ranging all the way from Lake Champlain up to the top of Mount Mansfield. We do require students to live on campus for at least two years. And so the residential experience is really a big part of your college life, especially in your first year. Um, you may be moving away from home for the first time, going away to college. So we've put a lot of thought into that and we've created different learning communities. So 100% of our students live in a learning community, but which one you choose is really up to you. It doesn't have to relate to your major or maybe it might. So you can see here the different list of um, options that we have and students actually, you get to rank your preferences on your housing application for which one you like to live in. Our UVM community is dedicated to supporting and celebrating the unique identity of every student, faculty and staff member. One of the most important things that we share as a community is our commitment to promoting respect, integrity, innovation, openness, justice, and responsibility. We call this our common ground. So when new students arrive on campus, they actually sign a pledge to these values at a candlelight ceremony on the university green, and that's the picture that's kind of in the middle there. It's one of our most cherished traditions at UVM. Our community also deeply values diversity, equity, and inclusion in every aspect of campus life. We do have four different identity centers on our campus, which are really active places for students to gather, um, engage and explore what those identities might mean to them. So for students who have that common identity, it's really a second home for you at UVM. We also have our four general education requirements, which are those classes that every student has to take in order to graduate. So you'll have to take at least two classes on diversity, another on sustainability, quantitative reasoning and foundational writing and information literacy. We want you, our students to develop integrated competencies that are essential to lifelong learning and responsible citizenship, which is why we've made these our core requirements. Like I said, we're in Burlington, Vermont, and UVM would not be the same without Burlington. Burlington would not be the same without UVM. The energy of the campus really feeds the town, and the town gives it back right to the, the university with great internships, a thriving music scene, world-class restaurants, coffee houses, and miles of parks, trails, and beaches. Kind of to sum it all up, um, UVM is a really great mix of a fully equipped land-grant university that's old and new and big and small and our outstanding faculty love to teach and students from all over the world get, um, you know, all kinds of experience towards finding success, however it is that you define that success. So that could be employment, it could be graduate school, really wherever your goals lead you. And as you can see here, our students have had strong outcomes and we're really proud of the work that our alumni community are doing across the globe. All right, to talk a little bit about the admissions profile before I run out of time, um, we are on both the Common App as well as the Coalition App. We offer early action, which has a November 1st deadline. We also have regular decision, uh, which is January 15th. We will be test optional for the next two admission cycles. So for anybody applying fall of 2022 or fall of 2023, you have the option to submit test scores if you think they're gonna contribute to your academic record. 
Um, we do a holistic review. So we're taking into consideration all those different pieces of your application with an emphasis on academics. So we're going to be looking at your transcript, um, looking at your grades, but also the rigor and sequence of the courses that you've taken within the context of what your school offers. We do also have optional supplemental essay questions, which are pretty fun. It uh, gives us an opportunity to learn something else about you that we don't see in the rest of your application, such as which Ben and Jerry's flavor best describes you, which I really enjoyed reading those this year. We also automatically consider all applicants for a merit scholarship as well as an invitation to join our honors college. So there is no additional application that you have to do for that. At this time, the university is prioritizing the health and safety of our students who are currently on campus. So we're not offering any in-person programming uh, for this spring, but if we do get to offer them soon, we will um, definitely make sure to tell everybody and update our website when that policy changes. So I encourage you to learn more about our website and keep in touch with me throughout your college search. I'll be putting my contact information in the chat. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much. And our next uh, school is going to be Walnut Hill College. So we'll let them get their screen share going. And yeah, we have after Walnut, we have two uh, schools left for you to put any questions you have in that chat box. Um, so before we get to that time, make sure you uh, drop those questions in there and we'll leave the floor over to Walnut Hill College. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Jessica Dougherty and I am a high school representative for Walnut Hill College. We are actually located in uh, Philadelphia. And we are a smaller boutique college compared to the bigger universities out there. We're only about 500 to 550 students specializing in the hospitality industry. Uh, we offer an 18 month associates program or a 36 month bachelor's program. The reason for that being is how we're set up. We don't do traditional semesters. We do 10 week trimesters. So every 10 weeks with us, you get a new class schedule. We offer associates degrees in culinary arts, pastry arts, and hospitality management and we offer six different bachelor's degree programs in culinary arts pastry arts restaurant management hotel management food and leisure or excuse me food and beverage management and event and leisure management the last two that i just mentioned are brand new for this year and we're also fully uh, fully accredited uh, like I said, we are uh, located at 42nd and Walnut in the University City section of Philadelphia. Something that's extremely special about our program that's kind of different than a lot of other programs that do what we do is that we include a trip in our, not only our tuition, but also our curriculum. In the final uh, semester, trimester of your associate's program, you get a trip and the final one, a final trimester of your bachelor's program, you get an additional trip. Uh, associates program culinary arts and pastry art students get to study in France for a week. So how this is set up is nine weeks are spent in the United States and then a week is spent in it on the trip. So France is for culinary arts and pastry arts where we're going to be studying mainly in the Champagne and Burgundy regions. Uh, we are going to be going to wineries and we're going to have a main focus on food. We have amazing meals almost every single night. You do get a free day on this trip and that is to do whatever you like in the City of Lights aka Paris for an entire day. Hospitality management students is a little bit different than the culinary pastry arts, and that is in Florida and the Bahamas, where we're going to be studying with Disney, but we're not going to be, well, we are going to be in the parks, but it's not like the idea that you're going to be riding like the Matterhorn or Splash Mountain. We're in the inner workings of Disney to see how Disney is ran from the ground up because they like to hide everything because they don't like to destroy that illusion of the magic. That's something that Disney's always about. We do tour a couple other things in the Florida leg of this trip, uh, but this is leading up to your three-day cruise to the Bahamas. And just like Disney, you're going to be going below deck, seeing the inner workings of this cruise ship. And then your free day on this trip is to do whatever you like uh, in the Bahamas. Finally, if you decide to stay on for an additional 18 months for your bachelor's program, all six of our bachelor's majors get to go to England for a week. We study in the English countryside as well as London. Our most exclusive tours come on this trip, and one of them being a behind the scenes tour of Gordon Ramsay's fine dining restaurant in London. We do get Gordon Ramsay on this trip. Uh, and we tour the facilities as well as meet with his executive chef and his general manager. Later that evening, our students do get an opportunity to dine there, but sorry guys, that's at your own expense. We do not pay for that opportunity, but we get something that is so big and so exclusive. We're actually the only ones in the United States school-wise that gets this tour. And it's a behind the scenes tour of Buckingham Palace. There's just an itsy bitsy little catch on that one. And that is her majesty, Queen Elizabeth cannot be in residence uh, for that tour. She can't be home. 
uh, for security reasons, she can't be there. Plus, you know, Buckingham Palace is her home, even though it's the size of a shopping mall. So some uh, something for the underclassmen for juniors, if you're interested in this field of study or you wanna see if this is a great fit for you, we are still moving forward with our Summer Institute, which is gonna run July 14th through the 16th. And then July, I believe it is the following week, which is July, I have the dates right here, 20, 20, uh, 21st through the 23rd. It's three days, two nights with us where you're gonna be staying in our dorms. Uh, we are limiting numbers right now to allow for uh, social distancing for COVID-19, so space is extremely limited for this. And I'm going to throw up our website link where you can um, register for this if you choose. Another big thing that is coming up is our competitions, which is our chocolate competition, which is April 24th, and our culinary competition, which is going to be May 1st. And this is open to juniors and seniors as well. But we only allow one student from each high school, aka each program, Ocean County Tech, I believe already has a student registered for this, which is um, we only allow one student for each because of how much money we're giving away. Money that is one is only good towards our school. Uh, first place in each division is going to be $6,000. Second place is $3,000 and third place is $1,800. I am pushing for this. Uh, if there is any questions, I am the part, your main contact for this competition. Our enrollment process at Walnut Hill College is super, super easy. Uh, it's just your admissions application, which you can find right online at, on our website. We do need two letters of reference. Uh, the only people that we're not looking for, we do not accept your family or your friends. Uh, we, we want teachers, counselors, employers, people like that. Your transcripts, AKA your diploma. We have a 250 word essay, uh, and that is based off your goals upon graduation from us. So when you graduate, what do you hope to achieve? Uh, then SAT, ACT scores, if you've taken them, uh, you can opt out of doing the SATs and do our entrance test in place of that, which is 80 questions, multiple choice, untimed. It's to gauge um, that you can handle college level courses. It's basic, basic overviews of English, math, spelling, punctuation, and that type of stuff. Then your admissions interview and then registration and application fee is going to be $200. If for some reason you do not end up enrolling with us, we do refund you that $200 in full. So that's a great, great thing right there as well. So uh, I guess I went, I went a little uh, shorter than I expected, but if you have any questions, don't feel, uh, feel free to ask away and all of that good stuff. Thank you guys. Awesome, thank you so much. And we are gonna move over to Western Colorado University. Let them get their screen share up and running. We've got two institutions left for you to get those questions in the Q&A chat box, but we'll leave the floor over to Western Colorado University. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Brianna Clark and I am a regional recruiter with Western Colorado University located in Gunnison, Colorado. Um, so hopping in here, I just wanna tell you a little bit about Gunnison so you know where we are located. Gunnison is right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, which means we're surrounded by all things Colorado adventure. Hiking, fishing, camping, skiing, snowboarding, paddle boarding, all of those wonderful things. Within 45 minutes of campus, we have two world-class ski resorts, uh, Blue Mesa Reservoir is the largest body of water in Colorado and provides our students access to things like sea kayaking. And then we also have 750 plus miles of multi-purpose, uh, multi multi-use, single track trails uh, in Hartman's Rocks areas. It's just south of campus. Um, so while that area all around campus provides some really great recreational experiences and opportunities for our students, we also like to call it nature's best classroom or our backyard laboratory. Uh, over 80% of the lands around us is public lands, which means our environment and sustainability students, recreation and outdoor studies and biology students are actually getting out into that uh, environment there and are getting some really great hands-on experiences uh, right there in their backyard, 10 minutes away. Western is a smaller public university, so we have about 3,000 students or so in our undergraduate programs, plus about another 400 in our graduate programs. Our average class size at Western is 17 students, but we do promise you'll never have a class with more than 66 students in it at any given time. The graphic here is just kind of giving you an idea of what that 17 classroom would look like as opposed to a 500 student lecture hall. Uh, you can easily see where in the 17 person classroom, your professor is going to get to know you on a first name basis. They're also going to know that you're coming from out of state and are going to take a little bit of extra time to make sure that you're finding your home away from home at Western uh, and loving it the same way that they do. 
We offer over 100 different academic programs that our students can get involved in. Uh, some of our most popular majors are business administration, environment and sustainability, recreation and outdoor education, and biology. We also have mechanical engineering, computer science, exercise and sports science, and some really great accelerated degree or three plus two programs where you can pursue both your match bachelor's and master's degrees in five years. Uh, within all of those programs, you only have to be accepted to Western. You don't have to be accepted into individual programs as you're going through. At Western, we're very much dedicated to the success of our students. We wanna make sure that we're providing you as many support services as possible to help you with that. You can see we've got career services, tutoring offerings, as well as disability services and our EPIC mentors. EPIC is experienced peers initiating connections. Every incoming student at Western is an assigned an EPIC mentor who's an upperclassman student who knows the ropes at Western and they are your mentor for your entire first year that you are at Western. So all the way into your sophomore year or so after that and there might be friends at that point too so you'll know them even longer. I uh, definitely want to touch a base on the affordability and the cost of a Western education. Uh, so as you can see here, we have our tuition and fees listed. Uh, for our out-of-state students, our tuition is coming in at just under $19,000 for the entire year, whereas the total uh, or that national average for an out-of-state tuition is coming in at around $23,000. So definitely coming in well under that average. And you incorporate tuition and fees, room and board, everything together. Our total annual cost for a student is coming in around $32,000, $33,000 or so. A hundred percent of our students who apply are eligible for, are, are considered for merit aid, and about 80 percent of our students are receiving some form of financial aid as they are coming to Western. Speaking about scholarships and merit aid, as I said, every student who applies is automatically considered for a scholarship. Any student who has a 3.35 GPA or higher will receive this base and merit scholarship award here, valued at $8,000. The higher your GPA is above that 3.35, the more likely you are going to get one of these higher scholarships here. Um, at Western, we have absolutely been fortunate that we have been able to hold in-person visits for this entire last year. Because of where we're located in the Gunnison Valley, our small class sizes and the natural environment, it was very easy for our students to adapt into those smaller class sizes and social distancing atmospheres. Uh, so walking across campus and experiencing that for yourself is one of the best ways to see if Western is a place where you would thrive and uh, feel calm and comfortable. Um, if you would like to schedule a visit and check out our dates, you could just go western.edu slash visit. Uh, but at the same time, we understand that traveling is not always the easiest thing, even in normal times. So we are hosting a bunch of virtual events. We have uh, deep dives coming up to learn more about our multicultural center, our career services, mountain sports, and mountain um, campus facilities and recreation. You can see those dates coming up on the western.edu slash recruitment events. Knowing all of that, I want to touch base on our application process at Western. Uh, if you complete the Western application, western.edu slash apply, I promise it'll take you like 20 to 30 minutes or so, and that's if the dog interrupts you while you're filling it out. And then there's also an optional Why Western essay. We say it's optional, but definitely encourage you to fill it out uh, so that we can know, get to know you a little bit and why you're thinking about Western. We're on a rolling admissions policy, so there is not an application deadline, and we still are accepting applications for fall of 2021. Um, and we are test optional this year and are hoping to be test optional uh, in the years to come as well. We have a $30 application fee, but if you want to use that Go Western 2021 code to apply for fall of 2021, that will waive that application fee for you, and you won't need to worry about it there. For my juniors and sophomores and freshmen on here, if that application fee is something that will be a hardship for you, please just let me know, and I will be more than happy to send you that application fee code for those future application dates. That was a very a lot of information. I'll leave this on the screen here for just a couple seconds so that you can get my contact information uh, for Western Colorado. But I am excited to work with you all more. Awesome. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Wilkes University. And we'll let them get their screen share up. And this is uh, getting closer to that end time. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat box. And we'll let uh, we'll All right. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Maureen Iskra. I am an admissions counselor with Wilkes University. Um, so a little bit about Wilkes. Uh, we are 
a private university located in northeastern Pennsylvania in a city called Wilkesbury. Um, it we have about 2,500 undergrad um, and about 2,500 postgrad. So we are a smaller school, um, but we're in a city of about 40,000. So it's by no means New York or Philadelphia, but it's also not, you know, middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. Um, so it's a nice little mix. Um, we have students from 31 different states and 15 different countries. So we are a very diverse population. Our average class size is about 21. Um, and a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, so we do pride ourselves on individualized attention um, at the university. We do have a mix of professional and liberal arts programs. Um, we have 46 different majors and minors across seven different um, colleges. One of the great things is that 100% of students do participate in some form of research, internship, um, or pro uh, capstone projects. And this is just a, a really pretty view of the city um, and campus. Um, as you can see, it's city, but it's also um, lots of green space and the river. It sits right on the Susquehanna River. So I want to talk just really quickly about the admissions process. Um, you can apply online at wilkes.edu slash apply or on the Common app. We have waived our application fee for fall of 21, um, but if you um, are applying for fall of 22 or later, you can use the fee waiver admissions um, so you don't have to pay your application fee. We do require um, you to submit official high school transcripts. And as of just the other day, we actually decided we're gonna be doing um, test optional for fall of 22. So we are test optional for fall of 21, um, but we are also test optional for the fall of 22. Some of our programs do require additional application materials. So our performing arts um, requires an audition. So we have musical theater, theater, and theater arts. And then our pharmacy, we do have a guaranteed seat program. We require three prof professional letters of recommendation, a pharmacy related essay. So it will be different than your common app essay. And then um, those who are qualified will be invited to interview by the pharmacy department for um, a guaranteed seat in our pharmacy program. About 90% of students receive full-time, um, excuse me, receive um, some form of financial aid. Um, that includes grants, scholarships, work study, and um, federal loans and direct loans. So for this year, we are giving up to um, $25,000 per year based on um, your academic performance based off of your GPA. Um, we also give a $2,000 out of state award. So we give up to a total of 27,000 in merit scholarship, but because we are a private university, we also award need-based aid. So that's based off of the family financial situation. Um, and that is determined by the FAFSA. So um, all students are encouraged to apply and do the FAFSA and our school code um, is there on the screen 003394 and I'll also throw that in the chat um, when we're done. So I know I only get a few, you know, a few minutes here. So what I'm going to do is um, these are options, things for you to do to visit campus, um, experience the university, um, be part of our social media. Um, on our YouTube channel, there's a lot of videos. So I'm going to put this in the chat when we're done. But I just want to let everybody know that we are hosting visits. Um, and we're keeping them very small and very safe. Um, but if you go to wilkes.edu slash visit, um, you can see the, the times that we're doing them. But we are doing them every day, Monday through Friday and select Saturdays. This is just a beautiful aerial view of campus. Um, so a little bit about campus life. We have 23 Division III sports and newly renovated uh, facilities. Our Ralston complex was just done um, last fall, not this past fall, but the fall before. Um, we have over 80 clubs and organizations on campus, ones that are related to academics, to sports, to um, faith and culture and diversity, leadership, 
um, student government. So, so many different clubs and organizations. Um, one important thing we get, uh, I get a question about a lot is public safety. So we have uh, public safety, but also we have, we are our own police force, um, not because anything has happened, but preventative and um, they patrol 365, you know, um, 24 seven, 365. So again, we offer a, a range of program services and activities um, for our students. You, we have an e-mentorship program. You will have your academic advisor. Um, there are tons of extracurricular activities and opportunities, social events, concerts, recitals, theater productions, lecture series. Um, uh, we have an art gallery on campus, um, opportunities for community service and internship service-based learning, leadership opportunities, of course, your academic advisor, uh, career advising and counseling, internship department, um, health services and counseling, and then any kind of academic support services that are needed, we can help you with. Um, you just have to let us know. And uh, I know I'm, I'm almost done here. Um, we have, um, Students are required to live on campus for two years and guaranteed housing for all four. Um, and I will throw this in the chat as well, along with my contact information. So thank you and um, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. And since we have some time left here, we have a few minutes. Uh, we're gonna start right back up at the top and I am gonna pose this question. We're gonna do a little bit of a round robin starting with the University of Rhode Island and just go down the line from there. But if you can give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Yeah, so a lot of our off-campus housing is in the closest beach town about 10 minutes away. So the people who own the houses there, they actually rent their houses out to our students when they move off campus. So of course, a lot of our juniors and seniors will tend to move off campus by then. It's a good deal for them. Nice, awesome. And then the University of Tennessee. Wow, how can I go after that? <laughs> <laughs> so in the last 35 years, 10 of our graduates have gone on to the American Space Program uh, with NASA to be astronauts. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. And then University of Vermont. All right, well, um, sustainability and protecting the environment are really um, important to us at UVM. So we were one of the first colleges to ban the sale of bottled water on campus. Wow. Better bring your reusable bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Walnut Hill College. And one of our uh, four student operated restaurants, we've had the honor of our students had the honor of serving not only royalty, but also the French ambassador to the United States a few springs ago. And we've also hosted Prince and Andrew of England in our great chef's room as well. Wow. And then Western Colorado University. Yeah, uh, Western Colorado University is the only college in the nation that has a certified collegiate mountain rescue team. Uh, so our, our students are the ones that are going out and finding lost hikers, rescuing people that are injured on outdoor adventures and are really just given back in that um, active way. Great, and then Wilkes University. That's a lot of really cool stuff to follow, guys. Um, so actually, this is, this is pretty cool. Babe Ruth actually hit the longest home run that he's ever hit out of our um, field, our baseball field. So it was over 600 feet um, and uh, out, out of our um, artillery park in 1926. So that's pretty cool. Wow. I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad I'm done with college because it would be a hard choice right now. <laughs> But uh, since we do have two minutes left, I am going to pose one more question. And that question will be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll start right back up with uh, University of Rhode Island. Favorite event or campus tradition? Yep, uh, my favorite tradition is our oozeball tournament every year. So it's a big volleyball tournament, but it's played in almost the foot of mud. You know, they're playing music. So it's always a good time. <laughs> Nice. University of Tennessee. Uh, my favorite tradition is the painting of the rock that's on campus. That's the only place where you're able to openly graffiti. Um, and during uh, any kind of big events happening on campus, there's always something spectacular painted on the rock. Great. And University of Vermont. I always give mine away in my presentation. It's usually that candlelight ceremony, but I'll come up with a follow up. 
Uh, our week of welcome, which is um, in the fall and in the winter when we have new semesters is always really cool because it's jam packed with activities and free coffee and all kinds of good swag. So that's a good week. Nice. And then Walnut Hill College? It's probably our year, well, this year we didn't do it, is our wine stomp where we're bringing in grapes and we actually, all the students get involved and we do a giant wine stomp and then we bottle everything and put it away. And then the next year we have it at the wine stop. As long as you're over the age of 21, you can have a little taste of what we made the year before. Nice. And then Western Colorado University. Yeah, uh, the mountain in the picture behind me is Tenderfoot Mountain or W Mountain, if you can see the W that's on there. And our tradition every year for homecoming is our mountain rescue team will light the W on fire. Um, and so we just have like a little bonfire. Wow. And Wilkes University. So the fa my favorite thing that we do is we, we call them um, pizza wars and wing wars. So um, Old Forge, I don't know if anybody, anybody ever heard of Old Forge Pizza. Um, and we have like the most pizza places in the world um, in our area. So we get them from all the different places, wings and pizza, and the kids try it and battle. And then, you know, who, who has the best pizza? And then they're awarded, you know, Wilkes's Pizza um, and Wings of the Year. So that's every nice. year. Nice. Now you have me regret and start in the whole 30 diet. So, <laughs> um, well, that is all that we have for our attendees tonight. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined us, uh, our institutions and all of our attendees. Um, there's going to be a quick survey that is going to be four questions after you close this window. Please make sure to fill that out. And then if there's any sessions in the future with ShriveScan uh, doing six by six uh, college fairs, you can go to our website, strivescan.com backslash OCSCA uh, to look back over this one, but strivescan.com to sign up for future sessions. Thank you, everybody, and good luck on your college search process.